morning, sure. Yeah. I can see Enes now is is getting to understand your uh, technology. Huh? Yeah, you're getting it. <laughs> yes, yeah. Yeah. Welcome to civilization, Mr. Yeah, yeah. Ernest. Yeah. Okay, thank you, thank you. It's just <laughs> the picture now, which is... <laughs> it's just giving you problems. You learn over time. Good. <laughs> sure. Yes. Yeah. So, gentlemen, we proceed to another topic called group accounts. That is what we'll be looking at. It is one of the major topics under, under your course. And sitting, I'll appreciate if you can give me soft copies of your exam questions uh, because we will not have time to revise. So it is better as we look at these topics, we are also looking at exam type questions. And that would be the best way to enhance your confidence. So I appreciate if you can email them at whatever, whichever date, that, that would be very much appreciated. Yeah. Okay. The exam questions? Yeah, the exam questions. If you have a revision kit for Zika, which you can email, you can just email it to me. Mm. Okay. Okay. So that you 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 we can you can start now with confidence looking at the exam type yes. questions. Uh, and in a way it actually enhances one's confidence. Okay. There's nothing to fear, gentlemen. There's nothing to fear. <laughs> with you, Coach, we are, we are very certain. Sure. Yeah. The future it looks bright. Yeah, it should. It should. It should always do. <laughs> so we yeah. look at the group accounts. One thing that we need to, to appreciate is that this is just one of the business scenarios. It is a business scenario in the sense that there is, there, is, there is, most of the businesses that we have, we, have, we have actually experienced or seen in this country, most of them are single entities. The, 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 once this company is there, let me give an example like National Milling Company. It is not planning to buy Supreme. It is not buy, buy, uh, planning to acquire any shares from these other institutions. So it is just a single entity. But we also know that there are companies that keep on acquiring shares from different institutions. So the question would be, how, how much of the shares have they acquired? What's the percentage shareholdings have they acquired? If say, for example, if it is between 20 to 49, then we know that those companies are just associates. Then, and the standards we know that we are actually going to use, whether it's ISC 28 or, or, or IFRS, I think 11, but we know that these are just associates, which we'll be discussing later. But here now, we are actually looking at a situation where a company buys more than 50% shareholding in a different company. So what are the basic principles of group accounts? First, we look at what is the concept of single entity. One is that the parent company and the subsidiary company are separate legal entities. So they are still single, ent the single entity concepts assumes or reinforces the concept that companies will remain independent. So the parent company will be a, a separate entity, legal entity from the subsidiary entity. So they are separate legal entities. That is one thing that we have to appreciate. Secondly, this parent group limited or the parent company which is one single entity, is going to prepare accounts using substance of a form. Oh. 
Then we look at control and ownership. Obviously, when you talk about control, you are looking at an entity that has power to direct activities. These activities can be operating, technical, or any other, but this entity has the power to direct the activities. That is what control means. But we shouldn't lose sleep that in, in, in an ideal situation, a parent company will buy shares not less than 50, but not more than 90 or 100. So there is a possibility that this company, a parent company, can only buy maybe 65% of shares. The rest will remain with what we call the non-controlling interest. Around 2007, when I used to teach NATEC, uh, and I've seen there has been a lot of financial reporting has evolved over time in a very amazing way. Even the terminologies have changed. Those days we used to say balance sheet, fixed assets. It's just in the modeling where we see we have still kept those, those names. But even like on the names. Those days we used to call it minority interest. Oh. But it seems, <laughs> it seems even human rights have now gone to, <laughs> to financial reporting. <laughs> I'm saying it does not sound okay. It is like you're marginalizing. Mm. the other shareholders by calling the minority interest. So someone clever comes up with the <laughs> non-controlling interest, but I guess it's human is the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so here, I just, just want to look at these definitions, what they mean under uh, the topic which the topic which is which is actually being discussed, <laughs> group accounts. You it will be difficult to avoid finding a term parent. So we need to know who is a parent. We are saying is an entity that has one or more subsidiaries. This is a parent company. So if you have this parent company, company Z, with as both shares in company Y and company and company S with more than 50%, then those companies, then that company is actually going to be referred to as a parent company. So in short, it's an entity that has one or more or more subsidiaries. A subsidiary is an entity which is controlled by another entity. That is what it means. It means that your activities, your operating activities, technical activities, or any other business activities have been controlled by somebody else who is actually called the parent company. So the key concept in determining whether or not an investment constitutes a, sub a subsidiary is that of control. I think that is a concept other than just looking at the shareholdings, because it is possible, sitting, it is possible for a company with less than 50% shares to control activities in another company. Okay. And we will go, I will look at all those uh, aspects or scenarios. So I think the aspect of control, that's the most important thing. You see, even when you look at politicians in history, or even the politicians today, you will see that there is a person behind them who is so huge, has been going to the gym. Very masculine, especially in Africa. It's in the in developed countries where you see both guards who are slim but well skilled. But here you see people very fat, heavy, and all that. 
But those they had been controlled by the by the people that don't look huge, who are in this case who are politicians. So sometimes it might not be the size. <laughs> you see, so control, 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 control might not be defined based on the size of shareholdings, based on the size of the physical endowments of this person that, no. Yes, you have this person who is looking after you, or who is your bodyguard. He, he physically is so, jing, uh, is so big. Physically is big, but you are controlling that person. So the key concept in determining whether or not an investment consists of subsidy is that of control, and that is key. It's not really so much on shareholdings, but it's control. And how is this control? It's the power to govern the financial and operating policies of an entity so as to obtain benefit from its activities. So, Regardless whether you have 50 plus shares, NSD, but as long as you are able to guide, you have the power to govern the financial and operating activities of company B, then you are the parent company. That's what it means. Currently, or at a global level, we are actually being governed by the pharmaceutical companies. So even when you look at the global leadership, global leadership does not rest with the banking system. It rests with the pharmaceutical companies, Sidney. Okay. So ideally, they're the ones who are actually governing our lives and 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 and, and they are, they are governing us and and, they, and it seems they have programmed what we should do how we should do it what we should what should what should what we should take so it's the pharmaceutical companies that are governing us similarly if you have a company that has the power to govern the financial and operating policies of an entity then that that entity has the influence over you has the control over you. Now, listen to this. It, it is well crafted. It is well crafted uh, as though these accounting standards were crafted by lawyers. Control is usually achieved by the purchase of more than 50%. Are you getting the term usually? Yes. Meaning you can have control right. even without having more than 50% shares in, a diff, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in another entity. See, then I don't know if it makes sense. Always when we are looking at even standards, look at standards, because now some of us will become preachers of these accounting standards. It's like the way preachers mm -hmm. in your churches do it. You have a Bible, but you can't interpret the Bible. So you need the preacher to interpret it to you. <laughs> you see what I mean? What? That's, that's very funny. But that's what happens in churches. Yes. And this is how these standards are as well. So always pay attention to the way they have been crafted, to the way they have been written. You cannot just go out there and say, a parent company is a company that has more than 50% shares in, uh, in another company. That would be wrong. <laughs> it's control. So control takes precedence over the, the number of shares one has acquired. This is why there's that uh, okay. word usually. And don't forget it, one. usually. Usually, yes, I, I like the, that one. Mm -hmm. 
So FRST and consolidated financial statements defines control and tells us how to consolidate. Before this standard, there was a standard called IS27. That's the one that used to actually define control. So now it's FRS 10. So when you have time, just Google FRS 10 as you are taking your, 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 your cock, your mossy, <laughs> or your chivantu. Just take time, just Google, go on isplus.com. Just read this standard so that they start making sense to you. Any comment, Sidney? Apparently, uh, our, my primary uh, for, uh, uh, knowledge about the uh, group accounts was just 50%. Mm. Issue of control is not emphasized. But now we know that the control is key. Mm -hmm. uh, the 50% is just probably a general statement. Mm. Like, uh, yeah. But uh, the issue of control, I think now, is more emphasized. So even attention now, we we'll focus so much now on, uh, on the control aspect. Yeah, I think that's the take up for now. Sure, thank you so much, Ernest. Yes, I appreciated the the emphasis on the control part. In fact, uh, that's when I've, I've learned something. Uh, the term usually was missing, as you have said, we need the, the Bible needs a, a preacher. Yeah, preacher yeah, yeah. <laughs> this yeah. I appreciate it much. Yeah, sure, sure. Yes, uh, because we just, you just used to say, no, 50% uh, plus, that's when you, uh, uh, someone qualifies to be a parent and that. Uh, and the control part was like, you just, uh, you master things as they come, but you don't actually drip, drill down deep to get uh, the concept behind. We really appreciate on this one. Sure, thank you. Mm -hmm. So now I, we just focus on what are those circumstances that would actually give a company control yet with less than 50% shareholdings. So we are trying to reinforce the concept of control over the shareholdings, yeah, see this, isn't it? Sure. So, so the standard says, a parent stroke subsidiary relationship, a parent subsidiary relationship can exist even where the parent owns less than 50% of the vote, voting power of the subsidiary. We have mentioned two key things, financial and operating. If one has the power to govern financial and operating activities of the business, then that person has power over you. Take it, take these two words. These are the two words, even when you're writing in theory, they give you a theory thing. It's about financial and operating activities. For a company that has the power to govern financial and operating activities, that company is a parent company, has control over you. You can ignore the shareholdings. Operating. So less than 50% of voting power of the subsidiary, since the key to the relationship is control and the power to direct activities. You are now getting it nicely. I guess you are now getting it nicely, Tim. The key to sure, the relationship sure. is Thank control you. and the power to direct the activities. So other situations where control exists are when the investor, one, can exercise the majority of the voting rights in the investee. This is where now most of us have been, have like 100% inclined to the definition of, of entity as linking it to the shareholding. Forgetting that that is just one of the components. So I say, can exercise the majority of the voting rights in the investing. So here, where 
others have 10, five, whatever, you're 40 of the majority, you can exercise the majority of the voting rights. Or you have more than 50%, meaning that you can exercise the voting rights, the majority of the voting rights. Then at that point, you can also have the control. Secondly, is in a contractual agreement with others giving control. Yes, you do not have 50 plus shareholdings, but the other investors within that pool, they have agreed to give you control, not on shareholdings, to give you control to govern the financial and operating activities of the company. At that point, you become the parent company and you have all the mandate to consolidate the financials. Are you getting that, guys? No, that yes. will come again. We have agreed. For example, uh, Sidin, you have you have you have thirty percent of the shareholdings. Uh, well, let me say that five percent of the shareholdings. NS has forty five percent of the shareholdings. And I have 20% of the shareholdings to giving us 100. You and NSC, you have agreed that I should be the one to have the control or to govern the financial and operating activities of the company. You have agreed, you have given me that power. Not necessarily the shares. Yes, in terms of sharing the profitability or dividends, you will get a very big chunk based on the shareholdings that you have. But you have agreed, like in a political party, you have agreed that I'm going to be your, your president for the alliance. It does mm. not necessarily mean that I should have more members of parliament for me to claim the, 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 the presidency. But you guys have said, yes, you know what, uh, Coach Carter, we know that you, you don't have so many, so many, so many <coughs> MPs in parliament, but we trust in your charisma. We trust in your ability to magnetize the support base of the middle class and those in low income brackets. We trust in your magic. Yes, we have so many MPs. NS has uh, 70. Myself, as sitting, I have 90. You, you only have two. <laughs> and we'll give you the presidency. We'll give you the power. I don't know if you're getting this. It says, is in a contractual arrangement with others giving control. Mm. You have agreed to give me control. Mm. So I become a parent company. So it's not just about shareholdings. Say, say hi, say hi. Hi. Hi, hi. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, uh, NS, is it okay on the uh, uh, contractual agreement? Does it make sense? Is something that you can memory peg easily? Yeah, it's, it's okay. It's, it, it, yeah, it's, it's straightforward, it's clear. We are, it's a mutual agreement between, mm -hmm. uh, despite the, the, the way you have explained, uh, 35, 45, the majority shares, but uh, you, 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 you come up and say, now, nah, I think the best person you can float is this one. Mm -hmm. You can manage our what? Controls, you put that other person. Mm -hmm. Yes, by by measure of contract, despite having the other person having less, none, but you have seen him fit to, to control in the financial and operating, then it uh, becomes apparent, it's clear. Now it's okay, yeah. it's, it's no longer jargon, mm -hmm. isn't it? No. <laughs> <laughs> Holds less than 50% of the voting rights, but the remainder are widely distributed. You know, I like, I like, I like FRS standards. I, I just like them. 
there's, there's so much logic if you look at them as, as business uh, standards rather than accounting standards. So what it is, you, you say, for example, <coughs> you are actually 20 shareholders with different uh, shareholdings. You, yes, you hold less than 50% seeding, but the remainder, maybe you hold about 45, but the remainder are widely distributed to my 3%, 4%, 2%, and what, and what not. Oh, yes. Just that you have control. Because those, if they are 20, they cannot come together to, 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 to claim that they, they have the, 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 the control. They cannot. They are indifferent. They are different people. Yes, yeah. yeah. I think I'm that's sorry, like no, the, the, way, the example you gave. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. So here we 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 looked at the the did we which one did we look at the one which shows less than fifty percent of the price, but the remainder are widely distributed. Yes, yes, I think you have gotten that concept then. Eh? Yes, where you have so many yes. so many so many vote so many shareholders with this which I would call insignificant, maybe insignificant votes, insignificant shareholding, insignificant percentages. But you have maybe 30%. And those people, they are over 100. They cannot come together and, and, and sap power from you. So definitely because of that, where you have less than 50% shares, but then they have widely distributed shares. At that point, you can actually have the control. Yeah, sit in. Sure. Then, like in these political parties, there are yes. opposition, but it's just a president and his son. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. You know? And there are so many, they want to stand here. And when you look at the uh, one of the major political parties, well, it has no 50%. Mm. Less, it is less than 50%. Uh -huh. On the opposition side, the court is leading. Mm. Uh, yeah. Mm. That's what I yeah. So you see, whoever was crafting, whoever was crafting this, whoever was actually crafting these standards, really put in a lot of effort. Then lastly, holds potential voting rights, which will give control. Holds potential voting rights, which will give control. So meaning that at this point, you might have more than 50% shares, the potential voting rights, which will give you control. Okay. Today, the internet is not stable. Mm -hmm. Okay, then now we go to the subsidiary slide in to just to dig it slightly deeper. Mm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we have already explained what a subsidiary is. I can just read it through. 
subsidiary is an entity that is controlled by another parent, which we agreed from, from the way it go. An entity has control over an entity when it has power to direct the activities. And we did actually mention not just activities, but financial and operating activities seeding. So you need to make sure that when you have these questions uh, in narrative form, you need to know the buzzwords you use, the keywords. That is what actually ends your max, which is assumed to be when the entity has it greater than 50% of the voting rights. You have seen how it has been crafted, which is assumed to be when the entity has it greater than 50% of the voting rights. Very nicely crafted. And we have explained why it is crafted in this way. Say that you use usually or assumed to be and all that. Very nice. So meaning that the, the, the parent company would definitely prepare the financial, the consolidated financial statement. Uh, and to only do that if it has control over one or more subsidiaries. But what that parent company is not going to do is if it is also a subsidiary of another company, then it is not cannot be allowed to go to, to consolidate. Hear it from me. If it is a subsidiary of another company, that parent company is not going to be allowed to consolidate. Meaning the one that has power over it will consolidate. Let's see. Uh -huh. Oh. Mm -hmm. Baby father. Uh -huh. you, can't, you can't assume the role of whatever, <laughs> so you need someone up there. Mm. So the parent company, we have explained that. Uh, so what are the underlying principles of consolidation? One is substance over legal form. The things that we've already explained there, basically substance, not really that the, the, you have the legal whatever, so it's substance over legal form. Then secondly is control and ownership. And that is very key, control and ownership. So those are the two underlying. So we look at the basic steps of consolidation. This is basic consolidation, starting from the basics so that we understand these concepts well. <clears throat> it says 100% parent and 100% subsidiary, assets and liabilities. So what we mean here, as uh, these are low hanging fruits, uh, Ernest, when you are consolidating, yeah. when you have been given a question in consolidation, all you do, even before you start doing those other computations, you can consolidate all you do. Where you find assets, just add them at 100%. Where you find liabilities, add them. They leave the spaces now for your computations. This is the best way you can move to in, 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 in tackling a question in consolidation much quicker than if you follow certain methods. Sidney, are you getting me? Yes, yes. So you consolidate 100% of the assets from the subsidiary and the parent company, 100% uh, liabilities from the parent mm -hmm. and the subsidiary. Kwamana. Keep it up. Chapra. Oh, <laughs> so just adding them, just adding them. <laughs> yes. Okay. Okay. Then okay. on the share capital, you only pick for the parent company. Yeah, Otherwise, you, you confuse things. If you get the share capital for the subsidiary, because that's subsidiary, that is why you compute your goodwill. They strike the, the one that you have at assets in, the, sub, in the, the investments in the subsidiary and the assets in the subsidiary, which you see in the parent company, and, and the shareholdings in the subsidiary company. Those, they, they strike out. Mm -hmm. And as we move on, we'll be explaining why it is like that. So the strike out. So the only thing you pick is for the parent company, the share capital. Then the retained earnings becomes the balancing figure. <laughs> becomes the balancing figure. 
but we will show you how you can compute the retained earnings. So we'll look at this question. A basic consolidation question. Okay. What? What do you want my phone? Hmm? Okay. So when you look at the investment here, so under the investment, this goes, this one, This one goes, it matches with everything here under equity. Mm -hmm. So let me explain this properly. So let me explain this properly. Here, it says Namakao acquired 100% of the equity share capital of Sakuwaha on the 1st December 2018 for 1 million. <coughs> this was 100% acquisition. So when you are acquiring a company, this component here, this is what we call net assets. This is equal to net assets. It is basically net assets. Mm -hmm. It is, it is this. It is the assets less liabilities. So net assets equals to assets less liabilities. So it should be 1,200 minus 200 here. So we are saying once this goes, it tallies with this component here. Any differences, the difference, assuming that the difference, here yeah, you get your goodwill. When you compute the difference between this and that, that would be goodwill. Those days we used to have what we used to call as negative goodwill. <laughs> so, what does it mean, guys? When you do your consolidation, meaning that you are going to add this at 100%, You will do the same with this one. You will pick this at 100, just this, because you have canceled this. The retained earnings will be your balancing figure. You will pick your liabilities as is. These two, they will be added. So, Meaning that you are actually going to have 1,500 plus 1,200. It gives you how much? It gives you 2,700. These are assets. Yes, these are assets. Then that would be your total assets, actually. Then you have your equity share capital of 1,000, because you are actually picking 100% by 
the parent company. You leave this retained earnings as balancing figure, like we said. You go to liabilities. Liabilities is how much? 400 plus 200. Which is? 600. Which is? 600. 600. which is 600. Mm -hmm. But here it's supposed to give you how much? 2,700. Mm -hmm. So what would be the balancing figure, guys? It is 1,100. Mm -hmm. But then if you have to calculate instead of looking at, of using the balancing as a balancing figure, retained earnings, if you have to use logic here, you will know when, when, when was the, when was, when was the, When, when was the, the, when was Sakuha, Sakuaha acquired? It was on 31st December, 2018. 31st December. When are you preparing the consolidated statement of financial position? It's 31st December, 2018. So already it shows that under retained earnings, there is no post acquisition. There is zero post acquisition. There is zero post acquisition of retained earnings. So it then gives you an understanding that the whole 100 here is coming from the parent company. Okay. <laughs> yes. Uh... So always try to use a bit of logic to, to competently prepare a consolidated account for financials. Okay. Sidney, is it okay? It's fine, it's fine. Uh -huh. The only part where I want to probably you to explain is where you indicated the good way. No, here, what I'm saying is that the difference between what you're getting in your investments and your equity of the, of the, the investments in, 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 the, in, in the parent company's books and 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 the equity on the subsidiaries books that difference there that's why you do your good deal so we'll go to good deal we'll look at good deal don't worry okay uh -huh. Technology is good now. You have seen how technology is moving. I see though. Sure, sure, I can see. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we go to example two with some 
slight, slight, slight adjustments. It says, or it states, following the Macau's acquisition of the 100% of Sakoa's equity share capital on the 1st December 2016, both companies continue to trade. The financial statements of the two companies at the end of the following year, the 1st December 2017, were as follows. So the first example we looked at, guys, the time that we were requested to prepare the consolidated financial statement was the same day we had actually acquired the parent, the subsidiary company. Mm -hmm. But here now, there's the, the subsidiary company, or Sakuha, Sakuaha, was acquired in, on 31st December 2016. And we are consolidating on 31st December 2017, meaning that Sakuaha has been running or been managed by Namakau for one year. Are we there, Sidin? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's check what is obtaining. Prepare the consolidated statement of financial position for the Namakau Group at the first December. Mm -hmm. You can even get the screenshot of this example. You can get the screenshot so that as we prepare, it zooms over. Oh, sorry. Get 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 the screen first yeah? and do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. what have I done? Sorry, so sorry. Let, let me just go back. I've confused things. Trust me, I've confused things. Wait, wait, wait. wait. Have you gotten the screenshot? Just a moment. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yes, I've got it. Okay, sure. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what are you seeing on the screen? Is it the whiteboard or you are seeing the question? Whiteboard. The whiteboard. The whiteboard. Let me do this because I want you to be seeing everything that I'm putting there. Let me do this. What are you seeing? Yeah, the question is come. The question. Come. Okay. So if we do like this, okay. Just want to see if I have a whiteboard down here. Oh, no, we ignore the whiteboard. Mm -hmm. Okay, so. So in this case, it's still 100%, uh, meaning that if we, if we check, we have, we have the 100%. So what do we do here? This goes. So on consolidation, we'll add this to start with. Yes. Then we'll only look at this part because these two, they'll go with the others. Then here, we'll also look at this, a component of the whole lot. And down there, we'll only look at the post acquired. 
we need to determine the post acquired guys. That is what we'll look at. These are the mechanics of group accounts. Sitting once you just master these principles, the Shwamana. That's it. Sure, sure, sure. Then here you add the whole hundred percent like that. Mm -hmm. So we yes yes so we start from here because we know it's hundred percent there was no retained there was no nci so we use the retained earnings as as a balancing figure but then i will show you how that can be reconciled to logic so 1900 plus plus 1450 how much you get 3350. Three, three three mm -hmm. <clears throat> so this gives us the assets. Come again. Uh... Here on the assets, uh, NS, like we said. We said assets and liabilities, you consolidate them at 100%. 100%, okay, okay. Uh, okay. One then you use one, retained one. earnings as a balancing figure. But then we'll explain okay. how we can uh, use logic to compute the retained earnings. Then on the retained liabilities is how much? Is 800. Oh. Yes, uh... On equity share capital, you only pick for Namakao because he's a parent company. You cannot say yes, no yes. in a home, and they always use this logic. You are in a home, you are a parent. Then your child has 10 kwacha, you have 30 kwacha. Then you say, no, we'll put together so that we have uh, 30 kwacha. No, you are the parent. Parent, You as a parent, that is, your, that is the money that you should look at as equal to the money in the household. Oh. You can't start adding shareholdings. It doesn't make sense. So here you have 1,000. So giving us 3,350. We need to find the balancing figure. We need to find the balancing figure. So meaning we have one eight, three, three, fifty minus one eight. What is the balancing figure? That becomes that that would be for for retained earnings. One five fifty. One five fifty. Mm -hmm. But you do you know how this one five fifty has been gotten? Let's reconcile it using logic. So when we are looking at retained earnings, group retained earnings. Group retained earnings, it looks at hundred percent. from the parent, right? Mm -hmm. Then whatever percentage you get from the subsidiary is post acquired, like I'd already mentioned there. It's post acquired, meaning why we are now adding the profits for the post acquired city and understand this concept. The pre acquired profits and which sits under retained earnings, you cannot claim any component, any share of that amount sitting because you are not running the company at that point. Sure. sure. And this is why the pre acquired. 
will be part of your computations on the acquisition. It will be part of the computations to determine goodwill. Mm -hmm. The pre-acquired retained earnings. You were not there when that company was running, so you cannot claim not even a way from it or a cent. So yeah. what will sit in the group retained earnings is post-acquisition, post-acquired retained earnings, because at that time, you have started controlling or governing. You have the power to govern the financial and operating activities of the company. So any profits that are made are attributed under your name. So here now we know that for the group retained earnings, for example, for, for the parent, we have 1,400. Mm -hmm. For the subsidiary, will be equal to, we'll check when, when, when the company, the, 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 the total uh, retained earnings first is 900. Uh -huh. But at acquisition, how much was it minus? So we'll go to this question. If you check, yeah, 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 I can do this. I can't go there, but it's 750. We'll go there later, I'll show you. When it is in this mode, it's like it, it just refuses. Let me do this. Mm -hmm. You have seen the 750 here. Yes. At the time of acquiring, it was 750. I just made, I just confused the debt, the debts. I confused the debts. I should have shown 2016. So, at acquisition, it was 750. So, meaning that this is the 750 that you remove, so that you only remain, you remain with post-acquired profits which is 900 minus 750 is how much? 150. 150. 150. 150. Which then gives you a total, 1,400 plus 150, it gives you how much? 1,000. 550. That is how this 150, 1,550 comes about. Is it okay up to this level? Okay. Yeah, yeah, it's okay. Does it make sense? Because these are the foundations of group accounts, guys. Yeah, they, I see. <laughs> we are getting. Well, whenever we are coming out, that issue of ambiguity. Mm. It's wrong trading because now we know retain gaining is a balancing figure. Mm -hmm. So the cost, what constitutes this one five fifty, is now what you have worked out here as mm -hmm. uh, how it came about mm -hmm. uh, after one four after subtracting the post acquisition nine hundred from the pre acquisition seven fifty, we have one fifty. That's the one fifty we have added to the one four. Which is retained earnings by the, 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 the parent. So it makes sense to me. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the first, the first scenario we looked at, the best, first business scenario we looked at was in where a company just acquires a subsidiary company or acquires company B, 100% shares. And the same day that they acquire the company, 
they are required to consolidate. The second scenario we looked at was after the company has been acquired, it takes one year where now the, the trading is actually even, trading has, has, has occurred during the control of this company that bought 100% shares. The third scenario, which looks more of a reality in the exam, is the situation where this company yes, has bought shares, but not all the shares have been bought, just more than, just enough to give it control. So, this scenario brings to birth the concept of NCI, non-controlling interest. That there are also other shareholders who have a stake in this company that you have bought. However, because you have the control to govern the financial and operating activities of this company, you'll be given the mandate to consolidate. But always put it to mind that there are other shareholders who in this case are non-controlling interests. And that is what we'll be looking at, guys. So here saying, as the parent 75% holding still maintains control, the assets and liabilities of the subsidiary are consolidated 100%. That we have no question about it. The assets and liabilities will continue consolidating them at 100% on a line by line basis. But it is also important to account for that 25% ownership interest in the subsidiary which is for the minority shareholders, though that term is, is no longer if, if, uh, common. So we'll say it is for those that do not have any controlling interest. For me, I, I feel like this even sounds more derogatory. I don't know. It sounds savage, savagely. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like uh, uh, from uh, our ministry, when we talk about uh, someone who is uh, disabled, Mm. out. You don't like that. Yeah, so you have to say uh, differently, everybody. People living with eh? disabilities. <laughs> mm. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. So things are changing. The world is changing. So I say it is mm. shown in the equity section, blah, 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 blah. But there are two ways in which you can do your consolidation. In two ways in which you can actually measure the Nancy I. One of them is the proportionate share of net assets. So, and this is easy because you see what you do, Sidin. You find the total net assets. The, the net assets that is bought, that the total net assets. From that net assets, you just multiply a percentage of the NCI. That becomes the NCI. And this is what we call proportionate share of net assets. For fair value, the examiner will give you the fair value, which <coughs> then you actually use. Are we there? Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. So let's look at this example here. It says Piri acquired 80% of Sangwa's equity share capital on 31st December 2017, when Sangwa's retained earnings were 750,000 kwacha. The financial statements of the two companies at the, at the end of the 1st of December 2018 were as follows. Mm -hmm. So again here, what we do, we just ah, 
sorry, guys. Internet is not stable. Just. not stable okay so obviously this will go 800 but then <coughs> on the consolidation on other assets this will be 100 percent one nine plus one four fifty how much we get three three fifty Three, three, three fifty. Three fifty. Mm -hmm. And it's on equity share capital. How much do you put here? One thousand. Sure. One thousand. Come on, I go. <laughs> on liabilities, how much do we put? Eight hundred. Eight hundred. But then now here, we're not going to make a retained earnings as, 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 as a balancing figure. Because then now we have two missing things here. We have the NCI, we have the NCI and, and the retained earnings. Mm -hmm. okay. Right? So from here, we know, we come here, sir, let me just do this. Mm -hmm. But in total, we need to get 3,350. Yes. Mm -hmm. So this one also goes, let me do this. This also goes. If we want to calculate to check to calculate goodwill, but we know in here there's no goodwill. This is how we calculate goodwill, guys. We'll say fair value consideration. This is the cash. So fair value consideration, guys, it was how much? How much did they acquire this? Piri acquired 80% of Sangwazi share capital on 31st December 2017. When Sangwazi retained earnings were 750. So here it already shows, because they haven't told you how much was acquired, meaning it's 80%. It's eight. It's eighty percent. This this is what was acquired, which is basically the eight hundred here. Which is basically the eight hundred. That was the investment. But then you have the NCI. at acquisition. So the NCI at the acquisition, guys, is 20%. If this was 80%, it's 20% of the 1,000. Because this is the way you get to know about about the at acquisition the net assets the net assets at acquisition it was 250 and retained earnings of how much of 750 giving you 1000 
So this 1,000, you calculate 20%. which takes you to 200, giving you 1,000 here. Whereas the net assets at acquisition, net assets at acquisition, where 1,000. Meaning that in this scenario, those zero goodwill. Mm -hmm. Right? So we know that the post acquired, guys, the post acquired the on retained earnings, was one fifty. Mm -hmm. So the post acquired it was one fifty, but this one fifty, you need to multiply. 80% to get for a stake of the parent company. Parent company. So that the 20% guys remains with the NCI. So how much do we how much do you get? 120. It will be 120. So 120. 120, so here to be plus 120. So 1,200 plus 120, therefore the group retained earnings, it is actually going to be 1,320. 1,320. So if you wanted, you could make you could make the NCI, this would be equity, whatever total. Let me just do this so that in, we are not careless down here. So here, this would be equity attributable to the parent company, which would be Two, two, three, twenty. Two, three, twenty. Which will be equity attributable you will write equity attributable to, to the parent company. This is for the parent. Then now you go to the NCI. You go to the NCI. We know down here we have the 800 from the liabilities. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> if you want to do crooked uh, method, then you are going to add 800 plus 2320 minus 3350. How much does it give you? Obviously, just to. Just do that. I'm just going to put it there, but we'll calculate the NCI. Don't worry. Okay, great the NCI. Three
I'm teaching and making noise. So, this two thirty now. Let's actually go to. I, I show you how this two thirty has been computed. So on the NCI computations, guys. Here we have, how do we compute the NCI down there? It is going to be net assets. Mm, sitting here at the academy, eh? Yes, yes. <laughs> it's net assets <laughs> times the NCI percentage. It is 20. Which is 20. So the net assets at report rate, this is net assets at report date. Meaning what you see in the balance sheet And you concentrate, like I said, you concentrate on equity. Because equity is basically your net assets. So the net assets at report date for the subsidiary, maybe I should put S dot subsidiary net assets at report date was 1,000. Do you remember, just check, 1,150. Check, try to confirm, times 20%. Confirm, 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 guys. Yes, yes, uh -huh. yes. So the 1,150 and 20%, how much do we get? That is the 230 there, which we used as a balancing figure. So in the exam, if you are confident with all those other things, you don't know the NCI, use it as a balancing figure, then you can work your way out. My workings, you can do your reverse engineering. Is it making sense, Ernest? Yes. <clears throat> mm -hmm. You will become gurus, guys. You will become gurus very soon. Sure. Mm, sure, sure. We're getting there. Uh -huh. mm. See, then, uh, you, you, had to, you had to fish me out of retirement. I stopped lecturing. <laughs> <laughs> So now we go to another scenario. Remember the first scenario we looked at, we assumed that the, 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 the company, the date at which the subsidiary company was acquired was the same date they were required to do the consolidation. The second scenario was now a situation where the consolidation is done one year after acquisition. The third scenario is where the company it has the parent company has bought less than hundred percent of the shareholdings, but obviously more than fifty percent. The fourth scenario now would be on the computation of goodwill, where there's an aspect of goodwill, what do we do? How do we compute it?
For me, when I look at goodwill, I define goodwill as stupidity. Sorry, my guys just dropped in. I was saying, I define, I define, I define goodwill as stupidity. It's just basically where one is trying to justify his stupidity and calls it goodwill. Where you are buying a business at a higher price than its carrying value. Then you say, no, this is why I bought it at slightly expensive. It's because of the reputation. It is because of where the, 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 the company is, 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 is geographically situated. It is because this company is near UTH. So whenever if, if, if clients get sick, they can easily go to UTH. You are trying to find the reason why you have bought it at an expensive price. Ernest, are you getting me? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're saying on acquisition of a subsidiary, the parent will usually pay more for the subsidiary than the value of the net assets. Now you're trying to justify why it could be because of customer loyalty, good reputation and all that. But in short, is that you are buying this business at a price higher than its book value. So the difference between what the parent pays and what the net assets are truly worth is referred to as a goodwill. But the goodwill that you are going to show in the balance sheet, it is full goodwill, meaning that even a component for the NCI will be included in there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Very good. So a company buys 75% of the equity shares in a subsidiary company for 156,000. The remaining shares were valued at 52,000 and the net assets at acquisition were, 1, 000, were 170,000. That's almost done, this is the last slide. We are 170,000. Get get a screenshot so that we go to we go yes. to the whiteboard. Get a screenshot, guys. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, so guys, then now uh, we, we are told non controlling interest is measured using the proportional share of net assets method or on controlling interest is measured using the fair value method. So we can now proceed. Let's go to the whiteboard. You will help me with those numbers. Mm -hmm. 
So we'll start with the proportionate method. Mm, Siddhi, you are enjoying at the academy, eh? This is nice, this is fantastic. You know, this is a confusing guys, and just move on. Keep on checking answers to comparing him to what you are writing. Ah, no. <laughs> this is better. So now, on and the good you one, Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. So we start the fair value consideration, guys. This is the actual cash that was paid. by the parent company. So how much did the parent company buy? Uh, 156. 156. Oh, mm -hmm. So then we go to the net assets, non-controlling assets, non-controlling interest at Acquisition, guys. What was the total net assets? Did they show? Uh, uh, net uh, or, or, or for the NCI? Then... Uh, net assets at acquisition was uh, 170. 170. Brilliant, 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 Ernest. Uh -huh. So, what was the NCI percentage, guys? It's 25. So we'll calculate 25% of 170. Which gives us how much? 42,500. 42,500. So we are actually saying the, what the parent company paid plus what would assume the NCI could have paid. Why I'm using the term assumption here on the NCI. They are quite a number. You can't go to ask them that, ah, how much did you pay? How much did you pay for this stake? No, but we are just assuming that if the if the book value, if the net asset was so much, 25% of it could be this much. Which gives you how much, guys? 113,500. 113, Brilliant. Have you calculated the correctly? 198, that uh, 198. Uh, yeah, because uh, it's not possible, Sidin. How did you calculate the 100? 198,500. Sidin, how did you calculate that? Oh, yeah, uh, subtracting. How much? 198,500. 198. 500. 500. 500. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then what the net assets, guys? Let's go back to net assets. 170. No, is it? 170. I mean, I think thousand. Giving you how much? Hundred and twenty-eight five hundred. Oh, twenty-eight, huh? Twenty-eight five hundred. That's it. 
we still have time. I'm finalizing. So we continue, guys. This is on proportionate method. Then now we go to fair value method. So on fair value method, guys, this is what we'll do. We'll start with the fair value consideration like we did. So fair value consideration was how much? 156. 156. It was 156. Brilliant. Mm -hmm. Then the NCI at acquisition. What was the fair value NCI? They will always give you. Okay. It was valued at 52,000. At 52,000. Yes. Giving you how much? Is it 108 or what? 108. Two zero eight. Two zero eight. Two zero eight. Yes. Less net assets. The one seventy thousand. Mm. Thirty-eight thousand. That would be a good way of using fair value. Why are they different? Because the other one is using fair value for the NCI. You are saying you have measured fair value, obviously, actually looking at arm's length uh, uh, more. What do you think the value of those shares are? I see. Uh -huh. So in the exam, they'll tell you whether you're using fair value or you're using proportionate. The other way in which yeah. you can get this 38,000 is like this. You have the parent here. You have the subsidiary there. So how much would you assume that was paid? You can assume that the, what was paid was, was it 52? If we go back there, uh, uh, for that was? The, the 156. Uh -huh. So here you have the 42. You have the first 42, 500. No? OK, yeah. 
on the parent, sorry, on the parent is a 156. Yes. Then this side, you have how much? You have. The net asset. Uh -huh. So th that side, that side, you have. You have on the net assets, you have, let's say for example, you have 42,500. I'm just trying to see if we can still get this. Mm -hmm. Now from the 170, 170,000, times 80%. How much do you get? Uh, so give, me, give me this side as well. 136. 136. One, then this side give me the fair value for was 52. Is it 52,000? Hmm? 52,000. 52,000. Here, the difference, how much would you get? 156,000 minus 136,000. This is 20. Hmm? 20,000. 20,000. Okay, now what I want to do, uh, let me go back this side. One, one, 170,000 times 80, you got what? What is this? Is that what you're getting? It's 20,000. 136. One, one, uh, I mean, the, yeah, 80%, 176, 186. Okay. The difference is 20. Yeah. The difference is 20. Then this side, what's the difference? Uh, 52. So it will take us to the fair value. I think it will take us to 28. 500 mm. when we added this to because there I see it's nine five or oh, it's nine thousand five hundred negative yes. Yes, oh, 9, 5, okay. ah this is not what I wanted to do let me get back here I wanted to see how one can get can get this 38,000. We know the base is 170. So we know for sure that 156, okay. Basically when you are just calculating the fair value method, let me not complicate things. This is how you would actually compute it. Where you bring in the NCI at fair value, you add mm -hmm. it to the fair value consideration from the parent company and then net, yes. less net assets. So what you get will be the goodwill. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. so, so when uh, I want to, uh, let me just, I'm just coming. Mm -hmm. So every time when he, uh, we are to create using fair value, they will state in the exam. Yes, they will state because you can't, you can't, you can't, you can't determine the fair value on your own. Yes. Your, your yeah, okay, yes. You have to be given it. You have to be, you have to be given that. You can determine it. Mm -hmm. So we go back to mm -hmm. 
So that is what it is on the goodwill and everything else. So we are let done. Me, uh, NS, let, me, let me just, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. I wanted to just copy the, 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 that, uh, the, there's a website there. Oh, that but now we have changed this website. So I'll, I'll send, I'll update it, eh? I'll update that. Okay. Yeah, so oh, okay. most of these lect lectures will be even on our website. So it's better okay. that you okay. subscribe. So when I send the notes, I'll change yes. down there. I'll give you the updated one. Okay. Oh, please. Mm. Okay. So, Sidin, do a checkout. Tell us what has been today's takeaways. Well, I think what has carried my day is the computation of goodwill. Mm -hmm. It was very problematic. And also uh, the NCI, the non controlling interest. Because these are the things that we always. Uh, you put us off balance. Yes, you don't know this, you just start guessing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, then uh, I've also uh, learned how to lose 100% uh, uh, when the, 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 the acquisition is 100%, those are additions for assets. And um, the, ten, the that balance you figure for retained earnings. Mm -hmm. So this just applies to 100% acquisition. So the other one where we have uh, another controlling interest, you go further. So I think it gives you some kind of background on how best you can approach this. Yeah. So you don't know the excitement you are building uh, for the project, uh, project in this. Yeah. You just give me hope to study now, move on sure. and uh, attack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, Ernest? Uh, I, I think uh, I've picked, uh, I've come out uh, better than I came. Mm -hmm. Like on the, on the control part, on the, the basic of the parent, uh, I, did, I have appreciated that one where the, uh, we use that, if someone can have control mm -hmm. if the O is less than 50%. Yes, and then uh, uh, the, the other aspect on the uh, consolidation, on the steps of uh, assets uh, and liabilities, where just uh, add just 100% and capital liabilities, then retaining and balancing all those techniques. Yeah, mm -hmm. the ones I've really appreciated and the, and the calculation of NCI in good way. Yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. Yeah, we've come out better than we. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So now what you can start doing, I know these are basics, go to your Zika questions, just to on the conversations yeah. of goodwill, try, try, try these yeah. small, small yeah. things that you've learned uh, as we yeah. continue to develop it. Uh, we have to make yeah. sure that if there are consolidation questions, you hammer, cash flows, you hammer, yeah. financial analysis, you hammer. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes. Yes. Uh, this one, <laughs> we'll do. Yeah. We'll do this. Yeah. Yeah. So tomorrow, guys, what time can we meet? My mornings uh, are always open, depending on you guys. What mornings, time you, yeah. you, 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 you come from your, yeah, I, you know, I, I think you, churches. But for me, morning from morning, I'm okay. Yeah, I prefer oh, okay. to be home on, on Sundays and going to church. Yeah. Oh, okay, me, me, I usually uh, Sundays seven. I go at seven morning mass. Mm -hmm. Seven, then you're probably eight, nine, by nine. Uh, Catholic services yeah. are short, it's like yeah. this. So by nine, no, so, so um, is, is 10, 30, or 11 hours okay? It's okay. No, it's, mine, it's, I don't, I I don't know, mine. You mm -hmm. come at 12. You come at 12. Okay, yes. then let's, let's meet, to be fair, then let's meet at, yeah. at 12, 30. To about okay. 14 30 somewhere there. Oh, okay. I think right. that's the best. It's fair. It's fine. It's so fair, then, is it fair? fair? Very fair, actually. Mm. Sure. Yeah, okay. Okay, thank you so uh, much. And yeah. have a lovely, lovely, lovely. Uh, maybe just on one issue. Yeah, please. Before you, 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 you close, uh, I was thinking. Uh, 
Mr. Enes, you said you come from church from seven hours because mornings are very good. Yeah, I, I, no, I, 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 we end, we start at seven. You end at eight, 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 somewhere there, yes. So nine hours, is it possible? So in start? my case, if we start at nine, mm. we finish yeah. at seven. Yeah. I can still manage with this. Yeah. Nine. So it, yeah. I, I think I think nine nine is okay. Nine is okay. Yeah. I can I can I can manage nine. Yeah. yeah so nine to eleven. So that at the church mm. I just what eleven eight. You know. Okay. Okay. So there, okay. Eleven. Okay. Eight, so eight. let's let's meet at nine hours tomorrow, guys. Sure. Yeah, nine uh, hours. Have a lovely nine day. Hours. Thank you so much. And bye bye. Thanks. Okay. Bye. bye.